Say it, say it, say it. Do you both have any weird fetishes for each other? Should we talk about this? No. Yes. No, we, should. we can't. You asked on Instagram. We're answering on YouTube, baby. Let's go. How do you both share your responsibilities of having a baby? It's tough because there's certain things that Jess can only do that I can't help with. Which we are phasing out of that. Like mm -hmm. I'm still yeah, nursing, but uh, yeah. That's kind of what you're talking about. But also, Makai has such a special connection to Jess just because Jess is her mother. And I know that that's a thing with a lot of babies where Makai wants Jess more often than she wants me. Yeah. Specifically, at least right now in this phase. I would say you like need to be really clear with communicating what your expectations are and like what you do need help with. Expectations that are not properly communicated will more likely than not end up in disappointment. Like last night, for example, if Jess expects me to bathe Micaiah, bath Micaiah, whatever, but I'm unaware of it. And I think the normal thing is like, she's gonna bathe Micaiah and then I'll be part of it sometimes. Maybe I won't, maybe I'm thinking that like, oh, I have a little extra work to do. That might be a good time for me to like get some extra work done. And Jess doesn't tell me that she needs me to bathe her because she needs to run to the grocery store and we're not communicating. We both have different expectations for what the situation is gonna be. And it could lead to a big fight where if It'll earlier be like, in the day- oh. Sorry, to cut you off. You finished. How dare you? Anyway, <laughs> so that 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 situation, that uh, this hypothetical situation that totally didn't happen. It's just a random scenario that we picked. Earlier in the day, we were to communicate, talk about our expectations for the rest of the day. And it's all, it really, a lot of it goes into like scheduling. Why is no one talking about dropping the outro like that? This person said this multiple times, like multiple questions saying, where is the outro? What'd you do to the outro? It was kind of like a new season of life that we were entering into. And we felt like that should reflect in the content as well. To be completely honest, the way that I think about peace out from Jess and Gabriel Conti is like early twenties. We are both now in our late twenties. You're technically still in your mid twenties. Thank you. You're in the back half though. I will take it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the last time we said it was in our birth story where we said peace out from Jess Gabriel and Micaiah. That was, I remember we did that and we were like, this should probably be the last one. It's like the end of a chapter. We're parents now. Say it one last time. Micaiah gets to be part of it. Yeah. Just, we want to mature with our content, with our audience. Yes, because our vlogs from 2016, 2017 are so different and to be honest, cringy. And that's when we were saying all this stuff, but first coffee. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And it just- Anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I, I understand and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Which F1 driver is your favorite? <sighs> See, Daniel Ricardo, but he's technically not, he is not an F1 driver right he's now. He's a reserve. He's a reserve driver, which is a bummer. Who would you say? <sighs> Three, two, one. I don't know. It's like dependent per race. Kind of it like, okay, maybe Fernando Alonso just That's because what I you were what was it? he's Spanish. I'm 25% Spaniard. And he's a bit of an underdog. Yeah. And he's like, he's an underdog, okay, but he's people also are be like, he's not an, like he's, I know he's won a lot, but well, you know he's a two-time I mean. world champion, but that was like ages ago. But I really don't know as far as like the guy who I'm going for every single race consistently. And I'll like buy their merch. It's tough, you know? There's Lando, that George Russell. That was gonna be my answer. Lando? I'm a Lando. Landy Dandy. Fan. Landy Dandy. You have, what about Oscar Piastri? Should we talk about this? No. Yes. No, we should. We can't. Oscar, listen. No, okay, Oscar. Jess, <laughs> I'm sorry. Jess. <laughs> so Daniel Ricardo's out, was the only Australian on the grid, but now Oscar Piastri's in. So obviously I do root for the Aussie, like of course. But Oscar, Jess says that you remind her, since he's obviously watching and subscribes, Jess says that you remind her too much of like, all of her high school classmates that are just like Aussie dudes and she just can't move past it. Okay, that is not, we're not trying to be, I'm not being negative at all. No, you're just being like, why is, you know, homie from like 10th grade driving it's, in a yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he's such a typical Aussie guy that it just gives me like high school vibes. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with that. McLaren, woo. What word would you call this season of life? Wow, there's a lot. One word that I have been leaning toward, this is more for like myself, is leadership. Mm. I don't know, just kind of like entering the season of life with the baby and everything and then moving to Nashville. There was like three aspects of my life in which I was stepping into a greater position of leadership. One was with work and we're trying to like expand the team and build things out a little bit and, um, Leading a team takes leadership. That sentence was awesome. But there's that. Then there was becoming a parent. 
obviously. And then um, two, what, or three, wow, I can, <laughs> I can count. Three, the third one was uh, with community and being here in Nashville. Jess and I are soon starting a small group that we're gonna be leading with like friends of ours and stuff like that. There's three things basically. I could like elaborate on them for a while, but you know. We have like a bajillion other questions to get to. I don't know why I thought we'd be like, say this same word on the count of three mm -hmm. was transition. I feel like we're in this stage and season of life of like transition. I think we are transitioning things in our work, which maybe we'll be talking about soon. At the end of this video, we're going to be talking about it for sure. Transitioning our home life, which is something else that we'll Talk about soon. You'll soon seen. Soon seen. Soon seen. Finances. I feel like we're transitioning a lot of things. And so I just feel mm. like in general, there's a lot of change happening, but it's yeah, all true. like for the good. That's good. To know. If I ran into you, you'd be with someone new. Please don't go any further. Stream Jess's new song. How is living in Nashville? Amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. We're so happy to be back. Community is such an answered prayer, mm -hmm. which if you think about it, we have been married six years now. Six and a half. We prayed for community the whole time. Mm -hmm. And like now I feel really like confident that this is like such a good place for us. I think what we needed the whole time is to build a community in which we were both starting from square one. Yeah. Do you regret choosing to live away from both families? <sighs> Oh, wow. Okay. First, let's thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. We talked about BetterHelp recently, but if you missed it, it is the world's largest therapy service and it's all online. So basically what you do is you answer a bunch of questions about your needs and your preferences, and then they will match you with one of their 30,000 licensed therapists. <laughs> Freaking, is therapists the weirdest word? Therapists. You said they'll match you with one of their 30,000 licensed therapists. Did I say it weird? So you can message your therapist at any time and then schedule sessions via text, call, or video call. And if you've watched our videos for a while, you would probably know that Jess and I have been to therapy. We've done therapy. We are huge advocates. <laughs> we have, we've been to therapy and we have done therapy. Okay, thanks. Anyway, we're huge advocates of going and finding help. <laughs> Get out of here. So if you are interested in trying out BetterHelp, we definitely recommend it. You can click the link down below. Go to better, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash Jess and Gabriel for 10% off your first month. Let's go. Okay, do we regret <clears throat> choosing to move away from both of our families? No. I mean, it is tougher when you have a baby to not be around your family, but I wouldn't want to be raising her anywhere else. <laughs> what just happened with my brain oh my gosh anywhere else i was about to go about to go anywhere else <laughs> whoops you go you start talking i agree i think it's sad not having family get to like grow up with her every day we're still mm -hmm. traveling to see them they travel here to visit her but in saying that we both know and we are so confident that this is the right place for us to be mm -hmm. the right place to raise makaya because of that i don't regret it at all mm -hmm. without making this a whole separate video in itself. Just a warning, okay? What? I'm just saying that, like, make this Just short. keep it nice and sweet. Where do you and Gabe see yourselves in five years? <sighs> well, I'll probably be like, I don't know, maybe a billionaire and... Wow. Yeah. Seven kids. What else? I'll be 32. It's weird to think about because you go, like, oh, in my head, I'm like, oh, man, 33, that's far away. But that's less time to there than when we got married so to answer the question oh, why did you who asked this dude i think we'll have two children two or, in five years or three two or three okay and i think something for me personally is i would really love to um be i don't even know if i want to say this actually oh this is juicy now what is it say it say it say it just say it we can cut it out if we don't, <laughs> don't cut it out I would really like to not be financially dependent on social media as my job mm. in five years. Not saying I'm going to quit YouTube or anything like that. I just think, you know, right now it's it's our full-time job and like financially what pays the bills. Mm. In five years, I'd really like it to at least be like not what pays the bills. Yeah, that's fair. So you're basically saying I need to make more money. No. So you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, I'm no. kidding. I'm kidding. Because we all know that uh, who the breadwinner is in this family. No. Currently, it's okay. true. It's not a secret that girls make bank if they're on social media compared to dudes. This is not what I wanted this question to be. It's true. 
It's true. The fact that I started this question saying, keep it short and sweet. This is nothing about five years time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to say that in a better way. Like I would just like to not be so financially dependent on social media. Yeah, you do want to homeschool as well. You're not going to be able to full-time social media, full-time mom slash also full-time teacher. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there's gotta be give, give and take. The last thing I'll say is I think we will be in a house that we love so much with some chickens and hopefully like my veggie patch is thriving. Wow, what yeah. a vision. I am currently, if you haven't seen. Babe, your hand is in my camera. <laughs> Sup guys. <laughs> There's big like dreams and, and big vision that we have for kind of like producing content and just producing really high quality. I don't know, filmmaking? films not films they're not films like mini documentaries of sorts on my channel i don't even know what they're called it's like elevated youtube elevated long form content i'm hoping that turns into a bigger thing where i can actually even start producing bigger stuff maybe we work on like a full documentary and that sort of stuff so it's like that's where i i kind of see the content that i'm making personally elevating to outside of the two and a half kids white pick a fence some chickens and a veggie patch how do you break generational curses slash cycles Wow, that's a deep one. That's a big question. Also, there might be people here who don't think that's legit. To be but completely honest, I don't even fully know what that means. So for instance, for, with my family, my aunt said one time and I was like, oh my gosh, I agree with this. She thinks that our family has a generational curse when it comes to our relationship with money. So many of us from all of like my dad's siblings to their dad and then even um, like if you look back in like the family tree a little bit, when you even look down at it am amongst my siblings, it's like, and I don't know if it's, if it's money per se, or just like this switch that it's flipped inside of us to like strive really hard to like build something and grow something and do something big, which is like a good thing, but it can be definitely become the main thing and like mm -hmm. kind of take the place of God and be the number one thing in our life when it shouldn't be, it should be there to help complement the other things in our life. So how do you break them? I think being aware of them. Like self-awareness is a huge thing and like really understanding that. And then at, at that point, I think it's more of like a God breaks them, you know, you do your best, but you know, it also could be something that is never broken. Like if there's something that you struggle with, this is a great example, me with depression. It, it could be a generational thing. Like my mom has struggled with it. I used to think like, why is this here? Like, why do I have this? This is like a flaw in me. And when I came to realize like, and really look at like my whole personality as a whole and realize like the reason I have depression is because I'm like an, a very emotional person. The reason I'm a very emotional person is because I'm hyper creative. And it's kind of this like train of something that's like a really good quality in me that can sometimes produce an outcome that's really tough, but maybe looking at it as less of like a burden and more of like a an opportunity. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, it did go pretty deep. Have y'all ever struggled with acne? I was on Accutane. I feel like I like did the tiniest bit. Like when I look back at even our wedding pictures, I had like way more acne than I do struggle with now. Yeah, and I wish I knew how much acne was related to your diet. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I went on Accutane and you know I'm, I'm fine now, but I, it's like pretty bad for you. I wish I like understood how much your diet actually affects your acne. And I know like for some people, like they can't even help it. And it's just like, they're going to get acne. But then as soon as I started like getting my diet dialed in, like my skin just started to clear out. Getting your hormones checked too, if there's oh, like yeah, an yeah. imbalance. I don't know. It's kind of like the way I look at high school because most of the time you have it like in a period of life and then you end up growing out of it and it gets better over time. Coming from someone who had like, I've struggled with it a little bit, but even other things that I've been insecure about, I just think it's also important to remember if you are feeling insecure about something, you will always focus on it way more than other people will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we going to the Eras tour? The what? The Taylor Swift tour. No. <laughs> no, we're not going to that. I feel like that's so controversial because I know she's been big for like literally since forever, mm -hmm. but there's like this massive wave of like everyone's going through a Taylor Swift phase right now. And both Gabriel <sighs> and I are not in the Taylor Swift phase and that's all we need to say about it. Listen. This is all I have to say. It's not the music. It's more so. There was about a two minute argument that just happened just then. Two? No, that was like four. Okay, we let's move on. We were going back and forth. There's, things got heated. Do you have a baby name picked out for your new baby? <laughs> new. 
new baby. New baby. New baby. Also, it sounds like an announcement, which it's not. Are they like confused or something? Do they think that we're pregnant? Or they mean next baby? I think they just mean next baby. Do Currently they, not pregnant. Do they know something we don't know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would say we have a boy name and a girl name. Mm-hmm. But when we get to that point, if we want to use those names, who knows? Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. We have, we were sitting on a boy name that was for sure. Like when Jess was pregnant with Micaiah, we were unsure of what name we wanted to use for a girl name. There was like a few, but the boy name we had dialed in. Well, Gabe had Oh no, Gabe we had, had it, it dialed, dialed in. in and it's so unique. It and is. Not, it's like, but it, it, it makes sense. You love it so much. I'm still not 100% on it, but it's a boy name. It's the only like boy name really that we have Mm -hmm. but we're sold on it both of us we'll see clearly do you want your kids to be close in age or do you not really care i would say i want them close in age i want them close enough to where they play with each other with each other i don't know i don't know because like a part of me thinks that because obviously like i love the relationship that i had with my brother and we like grew up like twins a lot of times i didn't i I wasn't making my own friends or anything like Mm. that i was kind of like just grafted into what he was doing if that makes sense. That's so interesting. I didn't have that issue being two years apart with my sister. We were always very different. Yeah, it was It was also, I think it was that partnered with being homeschooled because we were only 15 months apart, but the way our birthdays lined up, we were two grades apart. And I remember t- there were times where like I was the, I was able to not be bullied because like I didn't really deal with a lot of bullying, but like, it's like, oh, now I'm the one being made fun of because yeah, of you're the youngest. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me, it's, it's kind of a mental battle of like putting my feelings, like validating my feelings, but also putting them to the side because I am enjoying this time, just the three of us with Micaiah so much mm-hmm. that I could do this for years and years and years just with her and then like have another baby and get to experience that all over again. Mm-hmm. But I know one, I, I want them close in age. Having someone that can play with Micaiah will be amazing. Mm-hmm. So I think it needs to be sooner than- Than you feel. Than I feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Micaiah a sad beige baby? No. No, I don't think so. I mean, she does have a lot of colorful PJs and stuff. I feel like we've said this before, actually. We mm-hmm. want like a mix of practical and still cute if they can be cute. Yeah, there's like, there's there's people who go fully only cute, only aesthetic with their babies. And I'm like, that's a full-time job in itself. Like, yeah. It's, you can buy the Duna because it has yellow wheels. Come on. <laughs> That's a shout out to one of our friends. If they're watching this, they know. <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> oh my gosh. And I also will just say, one of our ugliest toys is the one that Makai loves the most. It's just the way it is. Like you have to buy the things that are super bright and colorful because that's like what they go for. Just because that's what they just love visually it. and stimulating and stuff, yeah. What does your Sabbath day look like and how do you keep from not working on that day? Good question. So Sabbath, those who maybe don't, maybe do. don't know what that means, it's basically a rest day. Ours is Saturday and we take that one day out at the end of the week to not work. What we try and do is it's not like rest day, like how we think of rest, where it's sit on the couch and do nothing it's more so like rejuvenation day like rejuvenating our souls and it's like do the things that you enjoy doing do the things that you like to do spend time with god that sort of thing i think we just really try to make our rest days family days too Mm -hmm. so like we might go to the park we might do a swimming lesson we um before traveling traveling made it a little different difficult but we were doing phone free as well so we weren't using our phones yeah we're still going to do that now that we're back but traveling was yeah it was, it was tough yeah and then like when makai is napping i'll journal like exactly what you said like just things that like really bring us joy and like rejuvenate us is milo better with your daughter now they are good they're getting better they play so much milo is makai's favorite by far Mm-hmm. She just wants to fetch. She wants to, she's like learning to throw the ball. Yeah, she, she does. Loves, she holds it and then knows if she like drops it quick, it'll bounce it'll and then bounce. roll away and then Milo will go grab it. I can tell he loves her and is protective of her too mm-hmm. because whenever we go out for naps or for bedtime, he always comes into her room. Or if I'm going to go get her, like he's following, he's always with her too. Mm-hmm. Funniest thing is once Makai can talk and be like, go to bed, sit. Get the ball. <laughs> Drop it. <laughs> Do you both ever argue or fight in front of Micaiah? We rarely fight, I think. We'll yeah. have like, disagreements and like just talk about the disagreement and be like, okay, cool. Yeah, I think like when you picture maybe fighting in front of your baby, it would be like, no, you said no. And we just mm-hmm. don't fight like that. Yeah, I heard something one time of a girl who got married and her parents had never argued in front of her. So she thought 
marriage was like a thing that you never argue. And then soon after she got married, her and her husband got into a fight and she was like, our marriage is over. We have to get a divorce. We fought. And she didn't realize that it was a normal thing mm. to fight in a relationship. Now, after being married for six and a half years, I think it's, you take it one step further where it's like showing them how to maturely resolve disputes mm. and doing that in front of your kids. So they know if there's a chance for argument, this is how you resolve the issue without fighting versus fighting in front of your kids and showing them that it's normal. Do you both have any weird fetishes for each other? So mine. Mm, what a weird question. I know. Let's let's just take this the wholesome route, yeah, yeah, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Gabe, all he needs to do is put on a backwards hat. Changes the whole look. It's amazing. Which I don't necessarily like doing. He doesn't like doing it. And I'm like, babe, you don't understand. <sighs> anyway. I put on a backwards hat on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. No, I don't. But... Jess's is puts her hair in her ponytail. Love it. Not like high, high ponytail, but just like right in the middle of the back of her head. It is so random because he said that since we started dating. Yeah. And when we were dating, gets me going, he yeah. said, because he liked to like see my neck. Like she my has like a beautiful, neck. long, skinny neck. And it's just like, it's like a beautiful feature. And then when she does that, it's just like, dude. And then it also gives me access to kiss her neck and go, you know. What's coming up? A little spoiler, please. There are a couple of things coming up. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to just put a little mm, right mm -hmm. here. And then I'm going to put a little whoop right there. And then also, this is for you guys that you can do with what you will. Ah. If you want to see our last Q&A, you can click the box that's on Gabe's face. See you. Bye. Later.